There are a ton of options out there to start your studio with, but if you're going to go for the full on studio option of, you know, interface, microphone and headset, is it worth your time going for an all in one kit like this one? The M Audio Air 192.4 Vocal Studio Pro. That Pro word gets thrown around a lot. Or should you just buy all the pieces separately? We're going to answer that. Better yet, stay tuned to the end and we're going to see if we can actually build our own full studio kit with Amazon and see if we can get better performance and bang for the buck than, well, this. Let's do it. In this kit, you get the M Audio 192.4 interface, an M Audio branded condenser microphone, as well as an M Audio branded headset. So let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Now the headphones are the M Audio HDH 40S and they feel, well, kind of cheap. Now they're very light, which can be a good thing. And honestly, they aren't all that bad when wearing them. Now, they do not block out as much sound as my Shure SRH 440s, but I mean, they are what they are. The connector on them is a quarter inch and 3.5 millimeter jack, which, is quite nice, although the cable is quite thin and doesn't exactly feel high quality. It's also about 10 feet long and guaranteed to get pinched when you roll over it with your computer chair. It's not a good sign. Also, it does kind of feel like I'm picking on it at this point, but it's also a fixed cable to the headset. Now I get it that's something you generally see in higher priced units, but with a cable like this, it's going to be the weak spot on your headphones at some point. Being able to replace it would be nice. Sadly though, all of that isn't even the worst part. You see, the point of monitoring headphones is that they offer up the sound as flat as possible. And the bass boost on these things is absolutely unreal. Everything else is super crisp, don't get me wrong. But their bass response is not only harsher than my Shure's, but they even provide more bass than my PreSonus monitors, which isn't a good thing. Which means these are not going to give you the most accurate mixing sound. You really need to keep that in mind. Moving on, the shock mount. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, probably the worst part of this whole kit. It's cheap plastic mixed with some metal and even cheap elastics. I would feel so much better getting another universal shock mount, especially considering how cheap they are, like $10, $12, that would hold the mic better than this. Just, it looks horrible. Now, the microphone itself is actually not all that bad. Kind of. The signal to noise ratio is the one sticking point on this. It's rather low, coming in at 77 dB, which is just a few dB short of what would be considered good. Otherwise, the frequency response sensitivity and max SPL, they're all in the acceptable range. Now, the signal to noise ratio does really stand out when you're recording. That said, the coloration of the mic, it's not all that bad. So as long as you're not trying to do anything like record an audiobook or something that requires nice quiet audio, you should be okay. But you will want to look into replacing this mic later on. All in all, <laughs> Not a great showing so far. The mic kind of just looks sad. Okay then, how about the star of the show? This is the M Audio Air 192.4, and it actually has some relatively decent features. That said though, buyer beware. If you were to buy this thing alone, it would cost you just over $100. That is instead of the $199 price tag that the kit comes in, which so far isn't looking like it's worth it. Now, looking at the build quality, it does look cheap from afar, but when you get your hands on it, it's not really all that bad. It's an all metal body. The top is kind of this plexiglass or acrylic top, which does look nice, but do know it's a massive magnet for fingerprints. That said, the one thing I do love about this interface is that it has top facing controls instead of the classic front facing. Now, I do prefer the look of this over the similarly priced Steinbergs because everything's just right there in front of you instead of having to crane your neck to see all the levels. Now, as for the level meters, <laughs> it's nice to have, but it is really basic. Uh, it's better than the Scarlet approach, and it's something. 
though I would much rather have some more granularity to those meters. You can see it actually goes negative 20 to negative 6 to negative 3 and then clipping. It's really hard to set a decent level for a microphone with those numbers. The knobs are actually pretty good. There's no movement as well as the inputs. Actually quite impressive on this price of a unit. Uh, the specs on this thing are pretty decent for the price. But the two main ones you want to look at are the gain, 55 dB, as well as the signal to noise ratio of 104 dB. Meaning this thing may have issues driving an SM7B, but don't worry, an SM58 or an ATR2100X should be just fine. This is the Shure SM7B plugged directly into the M-Audio Air. The gain is at, well, 99%. Dare I go the extra percent? No. This is how it sounds. It's going to need a lot of boosting in post, I can tell you that. This is the Shure SM58 plugged directly into the M-Audio Air, and this is how it sounds. It's at about mm, 95%. Also to note, this thing has only one XLR in, as well as an instrument in. Of course, the XLR is a combo jack, so you can either go line level or XLR, but the second channel is only a high Z input. Keep that in mind. There are going to be limits to this thing going forward if you want to expand. That said, though, I don't really have any issues with this interface, especially at this price point. It's clearly the best part of this package. Which leads to the question then, is it worth it? Well, there are a few ways to look at this. If you know absolutely nothing about what you need to find for a beginner studio setup, this thing is going to be okay. But just that, okay. If you were to buy this and obviously upgrade it somewhere down the road, you're going to be severely disappointed. Now, in order to explain that, let's look to see if we can build a better studio package to start out with from Amazon. All right then. Considering the needs of a studio start, I'll probably go with the M-Audio, but probably not the Air. Let's take a look at the M-Track Duo. It's brand new, just came to the market, and it saves a boatload of money, but gives us not only everything that the Air has, but also a second XLR input for later. Now, you do lose the meters, and you're left with a single clip meter, but honestly, that's not much of a step down considering this meter. As for the headphones... I'd probably go with the Audio-Technica M20Xs. They're not a massive step up in quality or comfort, not gonna lie, but you do get a much flatter and true-to-life response out of them. Of course, you can always go with the M30X or the M40X, depending on how much you want to spend on your microphone. And for that mic, I would go with the Shure SM58. You literally can't go wrong with that purchase, and honestly, that's one of those things that is future-proof. Not only is the SM58 legendary for its sound quality, but also for its ruggedness. But most importantly is the resale value on that mic. Now, when you decide to move up in the world, the SM58 can be resold for almost its full price. This M-Audio mic is not going to get you any money in the used market. And rightfully so. And with those three things off Amazon, you're going to come in at around $217, which honestly, yeah, it's $17 more, but totally worth it. Once again, if you wanted to save a few extra dollars, there are cheaper options for microphones that will have a similar resale value. But I guess then the ultimate question is, should you buy the M-Audio 192.4 Vocal Studio Pro? No. <laughs> Not at all. There's no reason for you to buy this whatsoever. Sorry, M-Audio, this is a pretty poor showing. What do you think of my replacement choices, though? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, crush that like button. It really does the algorithm good to get that like. If you really liked it, though, try that subscribe button. And let's see how bad 2021 is going to be together. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next video.